Welcome to Face to Face. And today we're going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about the war in Ukraine and the, the, the possibility of uh, uh, and the threat of nuclear uh, weapons and, and the war. And uh, I'm with uh, Diane Saar, who is running for Senate in, uh, in the US. Uh, welcome to uh, Face to Face, or welcome back to Face to Face, because we already had the chance to, to, uh, to be together before. Right. Well, thank you very much. And yes, we've met a number of times also. <laughs> we keep bumping to each other. I think we, we go on the same, on the same web. So um, I just wanted to, to start with that uh, story where uh, I just published it. Like David uh, Samson, who is a, a peace activist here in the US, published uh, just an article then uh, we, um, we published, we republished in Presenza uh, about the fact that he was invited and is invited to, uh, to talk about a rally in Washington, D.C. Uh, in February and uh, uh, organized by the Libertarian Party. And you got a lot of pushback from, from the Democrat and, and the people who are uh, surprisingly uh, pro-war. So I just wanted to, to get your take on it because uh, you did some actions and we have a couple of videos and we're going to show where you, you provoke Schumer, you provoke AOC on the same line and just wanted to, to get your sense for you. Well, you know, we have a sort of a uni sono, uni party with a few mavericks at this point. They seem to be only Republican mavericks standing up against war. Uh, and that's a tiny minority. I'm always amazed. The US Senate, I think, voted 98 to 2. Yeah. Those sanctions on Russia. Uh, early on. So there's no opposition. And the rally in DC, of course, is co-sponsored by the Libertarian Party and the working, um, sorry, the People's Party, which is very interesting because if you were to ask the Libertarians and the People's Party, what are their platforms or solutions to the economic collapse or a whole health care, a host of other issues, you would find they disagree very strongly on major issues, but they decided to hold this rally because they said, if we have a nuclear war and we're all annihilated, it doesn't matter if we agree or disagree. So why don't we make sure we're alive first and then we can have the political debate on how to address the other crises. And unfortunately, it looks like um, the party honchos are not prepared to take such a principled position. Yeah, that's what little bit David was mentioning. It's it's on all the, the platforms, the proposition of the of this rally, he's agree with everything. So it was like why why I will not go uh, and speak to this rally, but uh, it, it's uh, he got he got some pushback. But anyway, so um, do you want to? Um, we can see uh, the video about. Uh, um, when you, you provoke Schumer, which is very short, sure. and I think it is going to be a, a, yeah. a online. And I will have to say, it was a very expensive breakfast, and they didn't even have eggs. And then when they took me out, they wouldn't give me a refund. So, <laughs> yeah, well, we can we can uh, we can propose the refund. We can ask for the refund. Uh, let me play it. Okay. I'm not hearing the sound. No? Mm -mm. Did I... Uh, did I stop? Sorry. It's okay. Uh, I don't see any option to. Well, if not, if it doesn't work. Hmm. No? No sound. 
Okay, so we will, uh, anyway, so the, the, to make very, very short, it was a rally with, with Schumer, uh, and then we can, we can describe it uh, where uh, you, it was a breakfast, and then you stand uh, against uh, proposing uh, the, the, the vote on the, on the budget for the war in Ukraine, no? Yes, here they are coming to take me away. Yeah, and you see, I was very, I planned ahead and bought a small bullhorn that I could sneak in in my bag because I know it's very unfair when they have the microphone and you're in a room with a bunch of people with curtains and carpets and the sound gets dampened. And I wanted to make sure he could hear me. And what I said is, um, we're on the brink of nuclear war. You're responsible for this because you've, uh, sent a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine and Schumer then showing how much they tried to say my campaign was insignificant. That's the fringe, you know, the political fringe. Schumer immediately blurts out, she ran against me on the Lyndon LaRouche line. So my campaign was totally on his mind. Uh, and I think frankly caused a lot of problems for him. Although, uh, you wouldn't know it from the mainstream news media. I also went through the fact that I'm on a, you know, Ukrainian kill list along with Scott Ritter. We're both New York residents, were his constituents, and he refused to meet with either of us to discuss the fact that you have a foreign government funded by the U.S. State Department trying to silence Americans. Um, and I know my sense in the breakfast was the people actually were very interested in hearing what I had to say, and and. Um, the young woman taking the video told me at her table, one of the guys said, oh, this is a lively way to start our breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I was surprised because people applauded at the end. So <laughs> I was like, wow, this is, that should be a debate. <laughs> it should have been, yeah, it should have been. Yeah, it should have been very interesting. So, and, and so we have another one, but uh, I, I'm not uh, a little bit resistant to, to yeah. play it if we, the sound is not, uh, is not playing, uh, where, but you can describe uh, with, um, uh, because I can show a little bit the, 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 the video itself, uh, where you, you, were, um, you were at AOC's and you organized, um, go ahead a town hall meeting in the Bronx in Co-op City. And uh, this intervention was about 13 of us. You see his sign. That man is a professional tenor with a lovely voice. And he started singing, Dona Nobis Pachem, Give Us Peace, holding up the sign, Stop Sending Weapons to Ukraine. There I am joining in. And uh, this is a very beautiful canon in three parts. So ultimately, uh, there were about 13 of us yeah. singing this. <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, yeah. And uh, I have to say, it sounded pretty good. I was impressed when I listened to it later. Uh, you see this guy in that little mask in the front next to the lady with the black mask. He got really enraged. He said, we have to stop Putin from killing everyone and you're wasting our time. We only have uh, one hour with the representative and you're taking up five minutes. Um, it was, uh, and this by the way, went all over the news. It was in the New York Post, the Washington Times. Um, it was covered in RT. Uh, I think it was very effective. Uh, many people were, you see how angry he is there. Uh, <laughs> very upset. But, uh, uh, but people get applauded again. I mean, it was, they were at the end, it's, uh, it, it, it's getting, uh, uh, people are supporting uh, the action itself. Well, I think it was a combination. I think some were applauding for the singing and some were applauding because oh, they us yeah. up and took us all away. Um, but it did get much notice and i think we need more like that singing is very powerful yeah. and it's important to do things that are beautiful yeah uh, because the world is so ugly and people need something to inspire them and remind them that human beings are good yeah no no i was i was surprised because i was like what what's happening <laughs> and <then> people <laughs> were thinking and i was like wow that's a way to that's a really interesting way to do it so um so just ask me, I want to know what's happening with AOC. I mean, I'm very surprised 
she doesn't stand. I mean, she's not supporting the the, the treaty to ban nuclear weapons. Uh, it's she's very complicated for us. Well, uh, maybe we should ask: Was it really such an upset that she got elected, and how did that all actually happen? As opposed to the cover story, um, but we also saw, you know, last fall when two of my young staffers, Jose Vega and Kine and Thistlethwaite, intervened at her town hall meeting, and that went totally viral all over Twitter about the funding Nazis in Ukraine were on the brink of nuclear war. We have to stop this because I think many people, especially young people, are worried about nuclear war. They'd like to have a long life and a future. And immediately after that, AOC joined 29 other members of the Progressive Caucus and put out a letter, which was very mild, but it did say we should have negotiations. Could we just at least please, you can keep sending the weapons. We agree we should support Ukraine, but couldn't we try negotiating because this might get out of control? I mean, it was about that mild. And within about four hours, immediately, uh, they were pulling back saying, look, we support, we support Ukraine, we support Ukraine, we support Ukraine, but we think there should be negotiations. Within 24 hours, they had rescinded the letter altogether, which indicates clearly there's a great deal of pressure on them. Uh, was it threats? Was it bribes? Um, what, what exact form the pressure took? I don't know. But also, as someone put, pointed out, AOC said, Oh, Jimmy Dore, I think, had shown a bunch of clips of her saying, um, I don't care if I'm only a one-term one term congressman, I'm going to get this done. Well, clearly that's not her point of view anymore if she would back down so easily within less than 24 hours on a matter as serious as stopping a nuclear war. Yeah, it's, it's um, I don't know, I mean, I'm telling you, we, we, we try in other way for uh, for the treaty f uh, on the nuclear weapons and we cannot go anywhere so um you know that tell us immediately what uh, what is the deal there um you um i just signed a, a letter um to the pope and i think i just want you to to comment a little bit on on, on that uh, proposition uh, who seems to be uh, very important, very interesting, and uh, really uh, the, the Pope has been uh, supporting the treaty against nuclear weapons. He has been many times in, in the front line for uh, against uh, the war. And um, so what, what the letter is, is for the people to, to know about the Pope or it's for uh, really asking the Pope to do more? Well, it's in a way to encourage him and to make sure that the Vatican is aware that there are many people who really want peace, who support their offer for negotiations. And I'll tell you, in the last days since the announcement of the tanks going into Ukraine, uh, we've added a lot of signers. There are a lot more VIPs, and we got 500 signers yesterday of just people um because they're seeing how dangerous this is and some of them have been rather explicit saying i don't like the catholic church i don't like this pope but i don't see any way out of it's really that's a, beside the point the other thing which i wasn't so well aware of i knew that there had been a potential during world war ii that the vatican was involved in negotiations between japan and the oss to end that war. It could have been ended without nuclear bombs. Um, so they were playing a role there, but other people had other things in mind, namely dropping the bombs. I didn't realize um, that the Vatican had also played an important role during the Cuban Missiles Crisis. And also during World War I, when they there was a Christmas truce, which is described as just kind of happening when some German soldiers started singing Christmas carols or something uh, in 1914. That's not really the case. So the Vatican has actually a rich history of helping warring parties to end their conflict. And at this point, you don't really see many offers of major institutions. The Catholic Church has about a billion 
members. They have this very important history. They have obviously high level diplomatic contacts. They've already been involved in many of the prisoner exchanges between Russia and Ukraine. Um, and so we want people to know that and for the word to go out that this is an option. I will say Schiller Institute organizers discovered that almost nobody in the Catholic churches in the United States was aware of this offer until um, we got to them. And I can say now there's a growing awareness and growing movement uh, to bring this to the fore. So, um, so it's something in an ongoing process or what, what, what next? I mean, people signed a letter and, and, and what's going to happen? Well, um, they sign it. And I think, uh, actually I know the Vatican is aware of it. I don't want to say more, but there's been an indication that they're aware of this. Uh, and that's very important on February 4th, the Schiller Institute is holding a major conference of parliamentarians from around the world. I think there are members from the Congress of Mexico. I myself will be involved. I should be a member of the US Congress <laughs> running um, and, and the former president of Guyana and others to discuss. And what Helga Zeplerouche said is two thirds on the solution. And I think that's really important actually, because if you look at the fracturing with this decision to send the tanks, particularly the image of Germany sending tanks to Ukraine to fight Russia on behalf of a fascist Banderist regime, uh, this does not look good. And it is very unsettling to people in Europe, not least of all Germans who remember or know anything about World War II people who wonder how could this have happened? How could the Holocaust have occurred? Well, um, look at what's happening right now. The evidence is not this slim. Is yeah. yeah, the the crimes, the Adolf Hitler tattoos on members of the Azov Battalion. I mean, this is not speculative to say that uh, these are Nazi co-thinkers who are, are being aided in a war against Russia. And as members of the German uh, parliament pointed out, someone in the uh, AFD party said, you know, um, we sent tanks to the Soviet Union before and we ended up with tanks in Berlin. Uh, this didn't work out so well. And I know uh, a member of Congress and, uh, you know, the the lady that we heard speak at the Julian Assange rally, she was very outspoken in the German parliament against this policy. Sebim Dagdelin, her name is. Um, she said that the Greens and the Liberals have become the neocons of Germany. And she brought up Zbigniew Brzezinski, the clash of civilizations, the desire of the West to destroy both Germany and Russia. Uh, and this is a great way to do it, is have Germany send tanks into uh, Russia or to fight Russia in defense of Nazis that that uh, could be very destructive to Germany. I'm sort of wondering when they're going to stop it. But I say that because will NATO fracture? What will cause this unholy alliance to break up? And when it does, uh, supposing that we avoid nuclear war, what do we do? We have to establish an entirely new paradigm of relations among human beings. You have enormous work going on with the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, um, China. South China, and South Africa. Exactly. Uh, I don't know how many nations, a dozen or more, have applied to join the BRICS. Uh, when Lavrov was just visiting Angola, he said that he and the Chinese are discussing a new framework for membership for many more nations. They're talking about developing their own currency, getting out of the dollar. Um, and there's major projects. Lagos, Nigeria just completed in record time, four years. I think it's the largest port and deepest port on the west coast of Africa. Yeah. It's hard mm -hmm. to imagine in the United States when you lose your front tire in a pothole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we published an article about the port. But um, um, no, no, that's that's very clear. Then something is it's switching, it's moving. I'm not sure we have 
we are seeing the whole picture here in the US or in Europe because uh, the news is not really uh, going on that direction, but something is definitely switching. So uh, we're running out of time, more or less, and uh, just wanted to close with uh, uh, the rally uh, on the 19th. And then, yes. yeah. Thank you. I would really encourage everyone to be there. It's called Rage Against the War Machine. And as he mentioned, it's co-sponsored by the Libertarian and the People's Party. Uh, all of the speakers have many disagreements with each other. We are all participating because the question of nuclear war is first and foremost. It's President's Day weekend. It's Sunday, February 19th at 12.30 p.m. at the Lincoln Memorial. And I would really urge everybody to be there. Thank you so much. I think we're going to close on that Great. note. Um, that was face to face. And keep please watching uh, your news on Presenza.com. And we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you.